every year. Many hikers and outdoor enthusiasts go missing in our state and national parks all over the country. While most of these folks are eventually located, others seem to vanish into thin air and sometimes under the noses of others. Despite large search and rescue efforts, the mystery behind some of these disappearances continue to baffle many. Join me as I count down 10 more of the strangest state and national park missing person cases out there. Number 10. On July of this year, a 45-year-old Tucson hiker disappeared inside Madeira Canyon in California. Jacob Wing went into the canyon with an old buddy of his when the two became separated, according to Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. The friend reported him missing around 10 a.m. on that Friday morning to the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Santa Cruz County took the lead when it was determined that Jacob had likely crossed into their jurisdiction. The following day, a large search and rescue effort was coordinated involving rangers, border patrol, canine units, and dozens of volunteers. After several days and nights, the search was called off due to the total lack of clues and the harsh search conditions. The only evidence he was ever there was his car at the entrance to the canyon, which would eventually be towed. Quote, We were all a little perplexed by it all, said search coordinator Tony Estrada. Those who knew Jacob stated that he was in good spirits at the time he went missing and therefore have no reason to believe he wanted to disappear. Number 9 In July of this year, a 61-year-old woman named Shirley Bauman disappeared while hiking to Lake Blethen in Washington. According to family, the seasoned hiker had planned to use the Quartz Creek Trail from Middle Fork Road in North Bend and was last seen by other hikers near Quartz Creek. Search teams were called into the area where they would spend over 3,000 hours combing through the treacherous and heavily wooded terrain, including Snoqualmie River Middle Fork and every possible hiking trail in the region. Searchers were able to locate Shirley's car at an area trailhead, and canines followed her scent on a trail leading away from her campsite, but lost it soon thereafter. On July 28th, ground searches were suspended, and aerial searches continued. Her hiking gear was left at the campsite, but no other clues have surfaced. To this day, this case remains a mystery. On September 27, 2010, a 39-year-old went missing with his dog during a hike inside the Windy Saddle area of Idaho. Todd Hofflander was hiking with his friend when they decided to separate and take different paths through Hell's Canyon to the Snake River. Both Todd and his black lab Ruby were never seen again. After searching the area, the friend eventually hiked back out to report Todd missing. Idaho County Search and Rescue coordinated an extensive search of Hell's Canyon and the surrounding wilderness, including several dozen search and rescue personnel, dog teams, aerial assistants, and volunteers. On the third day of the search, Ruby was found dehydrated on the opposite side of the Seven Devils Mountain Range from where Todd was last seen. 
Searchers attempted to encourage Ruby to help locate Todd with no success. Todd was an experienced hiker and sufficiently prepared for the overnight trip. Months later, human remains were found several miles away from Hell's Canyon and heavily wooded area, but these remains did not match. To this day, Todd's whereabouts remains a mystery. Number 7 In August of 2020, a 25-year-old hiker went missing inside Tonto National Forest in Arizona. On August 5th, Cayman Welch was last seen walking southeast from the parking area at Weaver's Needle Vista Point near State Route 88 in the forest, according to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Welch had told family members he wanted to get a better view of the sunset and walked on the trail towards Weaver's Needle, but failed to return after sunset. Those who knew him stated that he was an avid outdoors man, but did not plan being out there for very long. Dozens of search crews, including park rangers, Maricopa County Sheriff's personnel, canine units, and volunteers combed the area, but have found little to no clues to Welch's whereabouts. As of September 2020, he remains missing. Number 6 On May 19th of 1998, a 22-year-old hiker disappeared from a hike inside Sedona National Forest in Arizona. David Barclay Miller was last seen leaving for a two and a half mile solo day hike inside the forest but, but has not been seen since. Family reported him missing after he failed to check in with them at an agreed time, thus kicking off a search by park rangers and the Yavapai County Sheriff's Department. Dozens of friends and family, volunteers and canine units joined in the search. David's car would eventually be found at the Volte Arch Trailhead on the second day of the search. But after this, no other trace of him was found. Those who knew David stated that he was in good spirits, was close with his family, and was no stranger to being outdoors. Number 5 On July 8th of 2020, a 66-year-old went missing during a camping trip near Strawberry Point, just east of Sacramento, inside the El Dorado National Forest. Saeed Amadi was camping with friends at the Ice House Reservoir off of Highway 50 when they decided to go for a hike near the point. El Dorado County Sheriff's Office reported Saeed had become separated from his hiking companions while crossing the southern fork of the Silver Creek. Saeed had phoned his friends at approximately 3.30 p.m. on that Wednesday afternoon and told them he was on a hill near a service road and that he could see the lake below him. The friends then went to look for him and eventually called authorities to assist in the search. That was the last time anyone would hear from him and all attempts to contact his cell phone failed. Although Saeed was diabetic, he was in good physical health overall and was an experienced hiker. A group of around 70 law enforcement officials, volunteers, and family members of Saeed spent nearly two weeks in 24-hour rotations looking for him. Even with the additional efforts of canine units, he and his belongings were never located. Number 4 On June 26th of this year, a 54-year-old Fresno woman vanished during her camping trip in the Sierra National Forest of California. 
Sandra Hughes embarked on a solo camping trip in the Sierras, south of Yosemite, but never returned. The family last communicated with Sandra on the morning of the 26th, but after that, nothing. She was reported soon thereafter, where a long and intense search kicked off. Deputies and volunteers from the Madera County Sheriff's Office, the Kern County Sheriff's Department, Tulare, and Fresno County Sheriff's Departments, and the California Air National Guard all joined efforts in the search for her. Searchers soon discovered Sandra's car near her campsite in Johnson Meadows, which appeared to have crashed. Around her campsite, documents and personal information was also found near the area between Biasor and Minaret's Road. Officials state that the camp was disheveled, which raised some red flags. Those who knew her say she was trained in outdoor survival and would never leave her campsite a mess as she was also environmentally friendly. A few weeks after her disappearance, some hikers believe they may have spotted her walking barefoot with a facial injury, but she declined medical attention at the time when they offered it. After a month of rigorous searches, the search officially ended, and no other clues have surfaced to Sanders whereabouts. Number 3 In September of 2016, a 49-year-old former Marine went missing during his climb within the Maroon Bells Wilderness of Colorado. On September 19th, David Cook set out to climb both Pyramid Peak one day and then the Maroon Peaks the following day. When David failed to check in with his family as scheduled, he was reported missing soon thereafter, thus kicking off a large search and rescue effort. Search and rescue teams including Alpine Rescue and Evergreen, Rocky Mountains Rescue from Boulder, the Vail Mountain Rescue Group, and Colorado Forensics Canines join efforts in the search for Chris. Aerial assistance was also called in to use FLIR technology as well, as additional search and rescue dogs from Garfield County and West Elk. Over a hundred volunteers participated in the search focusing on all areas where they believed Chris may have ventured into. When no clues surfaced, they expanded their search zone to include East Maroon Trail and other areas near Garbage Chute. The two peaks that David had planned to hike max out around 14,000 feet in elevation and are also given the nickname of the Deadly Bells after several lives have been claimed by the peaks over the years. However, David was a former Marine and those who knew him say he was familiar with the area having been there on other occasions. He also had a wealth of knowledge surviving in the backcountry wilderness. Number 2 On July 7th of 2020, a 10-year-old boy vanished while kayaking with his father within the North Cascades of Washington. Both Sage Adams and his father were on a camping trip and decided to kayak the Skagit River just east of Marble Mound. At one point, the river became rough, thus knocking the father into the river. His attempts to reach his son in the kayak failed, and he was forced to swim to the bank of the river. But by the time he reached it, both Sage and the kayak were out of sight. The father reported having to hike his way out of the woods to call for help. And by the time he reached his campsite, several hours have already passed. Pierce County Sheriff's Office, resources from both the Navy and Coast Guard, Border and Customs, along with aerial and marine searches, joined efforts in the search effort. They were able to locate the kayak and Sage's life vest, but were unable to locate the boy himself. Secondary searches by canines and dive teams were also unsuccessful, 
and after nearly a week of searches, it was called off altogether. Sage Adams has not been seen since. Number one. On July 7th of this year, a 73-year-old woman went missing while visiting family in a remote area in Mountain Center, California. Rosario Garcia was last seen leaving her home in Hemet to visit a relative just two blocks away, but never arrived. Family soon became worried and contacted Palm Desert Station authorities to help locate her. Two days later, her car was found abandoned by a hiker at the Sawmill Trailhead off Highway 74 in Mountain Center, about 40 miles east of Hemet. The car was found with the driver's side door ajar, but there was no sign of Rosario or her personal belongings. It was then a large search kicked off, including volunteers from the Riverside Mountain Rescue Department, Desert Search and Rescue, the local sheriff's office, and many volunteers. Bloodhounds and aviation teams also moved into the area, focusing their efforts on the Sawmill Trail and surrounding wilderness. Despite these efforts, she remains missing. Family stated that though she may have had some memory issues, she was always positive and knew the area well, and wouldn't venture very far for very long, and she always carried her phone with her. Rosario was not the only person to go missing in that area, as several others have vanished within a relatively short time, leading some to speculate a serial killer may be involved. But no evidence supports this theory. Roy Profrugal, who was last seen hiking near Pine Cove, went missing on March 4th. And then on June 7th, Lydia Adams vanished during her hike in the mountain center as well as Melissa Lane, who would disappear on June 15th. All these individuals were in good spirits, physically fit, and knew the area well prior to their disappearances. Again, Authorities believe these cases are not connected in any way, but I think we can all agree that something odd is happening in the ID Wild, Palm Springs Desert and Mountain Center areas. If you want to learn more about these cases, and even some more disappearances that have occurred in that area over the years, I encourage you to look up the ID Wild Disappearances. That's I-D-Y-L-L-W-I-L-D. And there you have it. As you can see, the majority of these cases have occurred in recent months, and there's no doubt new information and updates will come forward in time. If you'd like to update us on any of these cases, We'd all appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. Be safe out there, and you'll hear from me soon.